Today we talk about a topic in tumor biology, specifically about the mechanisms of oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. I would like to start with the oncogenes. But first we have to introduce the normal variant in healthy cells. Cells that have the potential to become oncogenes after a mutation event are first called proto-oncogenes. In a normal, healthy cell, these proto-oncogenes stimulate cell division and cell growth. But once mutated, they can become the dangerous oncogenes that promote cancer. The mutation has to be a gain-of-function mutation. As an example, we can think of a gene that is a molecular switch and turns on a genetic cascade downstream. Normally, switches are also turned off again. But if the switch would stay on, this cascade to promote cell division, for example, will not stop. That results in increasing rates of cell cycles and causes tumors. We can illustrate it here. On the left we have the normal proto-oncogene promoting the cell cycle. On the right we see the mutated oncogene that leads to an uncontrolled and accelerated cell division. This can cause tumors in the tissue. Once again, we have the proto-oncogene and after a mutational event that somehow leads to a different amino acid sequence which then results in a gain of function, the oncogene is active. This oncogene has an influence in the cell cycle as it drastically increases cell proliferation which causes tumors. Now we can talk about tumor suppressor genes. The normal function of the cell is to slow down cell division, to repair DNA mistakes or to communicate apoptosis if necessary. So basically tumor suppressor genes act like the brake pedal on a car. But once inactivated they can't execute their function anymore. This loss of function mutation causes cancer. So we have the same sort of overview here. Normally these genes keep the cell from dividing too quickly. If they are inactivated they promote cancer. If we talk about tumor suppressor genes, we also have to introduce the two-hit hypothesis. In a diploid organism, usually both alleles can code for the tumor suppressor product. If one of the genes lost their function, there is still one allele that can code for these proteins to keep the normal function up. That means only a mutation in both alleles leads to no tumor suppressor protein product. We have an example for tumor suppressor genes as well. Let me introduce P53, a protein that is called the guardian of the genome. If the DNA is damaged somehow, the P53 gene is transcribed and then translated into proteins that help DNA repair or, if that fails, that tells the cell to undergo apoptosis. If this gene is mutated and lost their function, we don't have a protein product anymore. So the cell is no longer able to repair the DNA mistakes or to undergo apoptosis. With this mutation the somatic cell will divide since there is no cell cycle arrest anymore. P53 mutations are involved in 50% of human cancers. To sum up what we've talked about today, proto-oncogenes in their normal form promote cell cycle. After a gain of function mutation, the cell proliferation extremely increases. Tumor suppressor genes first have the opposite effect. They normally slow down the cell cycle. If they lost their function, there is no DNA repair anymore. Apoptosis is no longer initiated and cell proliferation also increases drastically. I really hope this little introduction into oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes was helpful. If you like to know something or have a special topic in molecular biology in mind that you are interested in, just let me know. Maybe I can do a video about it.